Uh, in the meantime, uh, Sujan's joining us. He's going to talk about the complete guide to repurposing content. And he's going to do the complete guide in 25 minutes or less. Um, good for you, Sujan. Go for it. Uh, you're co founder of Web Profits, uh, run a marketing agency, fuel growth by helping, helping companies leverage the latest and greatest strategies. So we want to come at this from the strategy level. Uh, 13 plus years of internet marketing experience, and you've led the digital strategy, in case people don't know, for Salesforce and Mint and Intuit and other Fortune 500 companies. So clearly you have stature in the community. Um, I heard a, a, a webinar you did recently, and you were talking about your five step process that made you such a rigorous blogger that you you have this discipline and you do this every single day and you know hats off to you that's great stuff um you share everything you know accordingly on your youtube channel um and then we're encouraging uh, listeners to uh, go and read the blog if you haven't already discovered sujanpatel.com so sujan over to you awesome, awesome. thank you thank for the you wonderful, wonderful introduction. introduction can you hear me okay i can hear you Okay, perfect. I got a little bit of echo, but I will kind of turn my sound down. All right, so I'm just sharing my screen here. Uh, cool. Can everyone see my screen? We can see it now. Okay, perfect. So as you mentioned, I'm going to talk about how to repurpose content. Uh, this is this is assuming you have some good content, like Dennis said. That's the biggest problem, I think, uh, in the space. So let's assume you have some great content out there. Uh, and I want to talk about really today uh, how to, to maximize and stretch the use of that content. A lot of what I do, is I create a ton of content and, and I actually continue to leverage it. Actually, when I write a blog post, that is actually the first time I use content. And if it does well, I'll expand it. I'll expand the blog post. I might create videos. I might create a slide share. Sometimes they turn into webinars just like this this actual content and this concept of this article, of this webinar was proven out with an article. I, I, will always, I will try to take it all the way out to a speaking engagement and kind of leverage this as far as I can go. It's, it's updated, changed, and adjusted to the network I, I am publishing and promoting on. It, it, it's adjusted to the audience, so you know, there's, it's definitely improved as it goes on, but it most of the time starts off as a blog post. So. I want to jump into what you're going to learn today. First and foremost, and I will go fast here, so I apologize for talking so quickly, but I have generally, this is the pace I talk at. So just because I love what I do, I talk pretty fast. Uh, for, we're going to talk about first and foremost, rebranding some of your flop. So if your content doesn't work, don't worry. It's not over. You can still use it. We're going to talk about repurposing content in general, and then syndication and gaining exposure, meaning how to take content you've written on for your blog and distribute it further. Uh, so let's jump into straight, straight to this. You've heard a lot about me. Um, I'm, I'm a co-founder of Web Profits, but I also have a few of my own SaaS companies, Content Marketer IO, Narrow, and uh, Q.co. We practice what we preach. We pick exactly this concept. In fact, I am the test, my companies are the testing bed uh, and testing ground for a lot of these strategies, and if they work, we, we write about them, we, we, we scale them, we apply it to our agency side. So pretty interesting concept, keeps me really, really busy. But uh, what I want to talk about is, is you know, realistically some of your best content is behind you. And that's okay. It's okay. Sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. But the old content you produce doesn't necessarily mean because it's a year old, two years old, it's done for. No continue to maximize and leverage it and frankly reuse it so first and foremost you know not all of the content you produce or going to produce is going to be effective a lot of it will fail in fact what i found is most of it fails it's only a handful of articles that actually works well so what i like to do is um, take my you know my failed concepts my flopped content and actually repurpose it um, I've had, there's lots of different reasons content fails. Maybe it's bad timing. Uh, recently I published an article that did horrible and it was because I published it a little too early. Uh, it, it was on holiday kind of Q4, well you know it's Q3, 
three. Nobody cares about the holidays until probably October or late September. I just published it maybe three weeks too early, and it failed. Um, I also published an article uh, on Kanye West recently. Well, actually, no, it's being queued, and I guarantee it's going to fail because that article should have been released when Kanye released his album because it was hyper relevant. Unless Kanye does something crazy, stupid, or awesome, whatever however you want to look at it, that article was not going to be that relevant. At the time I thought of it, it was, but um, that's okay. Again, that's crazy, and I can bring it back to life then. So uh, don't, don't think that because it did not work, it cannot work. So what I like to do when content fails and I want to go bring it back to life is first and foremost I enhance the content. What does that mean? Well one, sometimes just publishing it again is like is all you need. Maybe changing the the uh, the header image, the main image, a few of the images. What I use initially is usually like stock photos. If content works, I'll put it in more time. But what that means is I'll go to Canva or Snappa.io, get some images, customize them, maybe add some text overlays, I might even change the title up a bit. I always do a bit of Facebook ads, uh, maybe five, ten dollars. I usually just advertise on the mobile audience network and or remarket to my list or a lookalike con a lookalike audience to my uh, to my custom audience. And why I do this is to help me be be get better at titles. And a title, to be honest, can make or break your content. In fact, Upworthy does twenty five. Titles, they create 25 titles for every article they, they create. This might not be new news, but I guarantee you, you're not implementing it. So make sure you, <laughs> you brainstorm titles better. And, and the second time around, update the title, shorten it up, uh, update the images, and that alone can help you enhance and just bring it back to life. That's good. The other Sue, thing is can I jump in for one, one? I just had a question. Yes. So uh, titles, headlines, clearly. You know, the first encounter of somebody with your content, very, very important. Are you in the custom of testing them in the way that, you know, some of these uh, viral publishers do? Um, I don't go as far as what they, what these publishers do because I don't have the reach of their, uh, uh, that they do, and I also don't have enough traffic. So uh, it's important to know, like, your limitations. But what I do is I, I, I do test, I don't, like there's, there's plugins for WordPress that you can use to, to A-B test titles. Um, that's fine. Uh, I know Hub, HubSpot does a lot of this um, and, and there's a couple plugins I will post uh, on Twitter a little later. I don't know the names off the top of my head, but um, you could great. do that way. That kind of thing. That's awesome. So a way yeah. of automating the testing. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And but, but one more thing is that, um, Test on Facebook ads is a way to test your audience, but not with the content. A lot of times, uh, when the idea, the headline is, is directly above the content itself, it won't get the attention. The way I think the true way to test it is comparing the click-through rate. So you can't obviously have a click-through rate measurement if the article is already loaded. So that's why I like Facebook ads. And um, again, it just helps you get sharper at it and creating more punchy things people create. Um, so yeah. And an expensive way of doing it. That's great. Thanks for that tip. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, all right. So the other thing, and what causes content to fail a lot of times is is the lack of promotion, or maybe your promotion didn't work. So what I like to do again when I enhance the article or rebring it back to life is I'll add some embeddable tweets. I'll even I'll even add some click to tweets. Uh, sometimes I go as far as adding like Instagram images or grabbing quotes from influencers. Uh, but adding the click to tweet functionality can just help you squeeze a little bit more life out of the content. And it frankly doesn't require that much work. It, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, and the next time around, if you create content, add these things up front to the article. In fact, there's an article I published uh, a few times, and uh, or not a few times, I published uh, a, a year ago, which completely failed. I didn't do anything except add some clip to tweet, and I sent it out to my email list again. And um, everybody, no one shared the actual article through the share buttons. They all used the first clip to tweet because it was a super punchy quote that kind of got in under the skin of people. So, or and well, under the skin, and they was relatable. So, uh, you know, that, a clip to tweet can be very, very powerful. Um, 
when you are republishing content, just be careful if you're distributing on other sites. Uh, you, you can run into some really big duplicate content issues. I know sites like Kissmetrics uh, and, and companies syndicate to business community, even entrepreneur.com, Inc., CNN Money. I know Mint like does syndications to CNN Money and a few other places. And what ends up happening is just a duplicate content issue. So, so uh, just a quick recap. We've talked about uh, already a few things you can do to republish maybe some of your flops uh, by adding new imagery, adding click to tweets, adding some quotes, um, and, and things like that. You can do the exact same thing for your successful content, but what I'm talking about here for your successful content, what I'm going to get into is using different formats, different formats of content. Uh, so things like infographic, white papers, video, slide share, even just sending an email to your newsletter. Those are things, a few ways you can use to republish your content and, and repurpose. Uh, I'm going to talk more extensively about that in a second, but um, do I have the green light to continue? Please. And, you know, I'm not seeing your deck if you've tried to pull it up, so. Do you, okay, let me um, double check one second. All right. You know why? It's I didn't share my screen. <laughs> Got All right. it. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So again, we're just going to talk about quickly um, some new formats to use. And I love these new formats because it can help you get even more traction. Uh, for example, if I was at like a speaking event, I spoke in front of a few hundred people in Vancouver talking about growth hacking and a few growth hacks. You know, even if I got 100% of the room's attention, I got 300 people max. I put on SlideShare, and that same presentation got 8,000 views. 8,000 is greater than 300, although you know, the quality of those 8, 300 were, 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 deep, were, were uh, you know, very engaged. They were forced to sit and hear me talk for a while. But 7,000 also helped me get a further reach. And so what you can, you can definitely get a lot of value by republishing and repurposing your content in different formats. So let's jump straight into it. Infographics. Yes, people have used infographics to death, but they're coming back, guys. Gifographics. Also, infographics embedded into an article. Long-form content is huge. Um, you can take some of the stats you have. You can make these mini graphics. Uh, instead of publishing a stat, show, create an image with a visualization of that stat. You can use tools like Vanage, Visium, and things. Uh, and those are great places to, and Canva even, to take simple data and turn it into something visual. So this should actually be visual representation of numbers, not just infographics. But uh, it does work. They don't work the same way they used to, where you could use an infographic to build links and gain um, SEO value. Now I talk about using infographic as the secondary approach once, once you've already written this content. White papers and ebooks are great. Uh, what you want to do is look at the last 12 months of your traffic. Look at the content that's gotten the most traffic. If you have any, and, and look at the source that's driving the traffic. If you're getting good organic traffic, um, you might want to go into this strategy. So this is also in the form of a content upgrade. So what I mean by this is you can take the, the, those, those, visit, those pages that get traffic, those articles, and simply make a PDF version of it. You can also go deeper and turn them into, let's say you talked about um, content marketing and, and 10 tactics or whatever, you can go and expand upon that. So an article, because it's published a year ago or just because it's done, you hit the publish button, doesn't mean you can't add to it. And just because you add to it doesn't actually have to mean it's, it's visual on the web. It could be a downloadable PDF and it's a great way to get an email address along with that PDF. So what I always do is I take my best content every quarter and start, I just make them downloadable PDFs. There's a company called the contentupgrade.com for I think about a hundred bucks or 120 bucks a, a, a PDF. They will actually design a fancy design uh, and take and, and create the content upgrade for you. Um, super simple way to kind of just stretch that content and it's only good to do with your best, best, best content because otherwise 
it's just not going to be meaningful enough numbers. In fact, I don't, uh, I don't know if people have noticed this on my blog, but in 2015, I published a book called The 100 Days of Growth. Um, and it was a book on growth hacking with, ta with 100 different tactics included. What I did was I took the best hacks and I themed them together. Um, so I did one on 17 mobile marketing hacks for, for people who have a mobile app and they're marketing that. Um, some on, on email nurture campaign, some on conversion, some on customer retention and things like that. Uh, and I themed them and put them as blog posts. I kind of inverted the process where I created the ebook first and then the content to follow. The difference in the content was that it was an expanded, more blown out version of the, uh, of, of, the, of the book. It got into more details, examples, and so on. Next is video. Uh, if you look at my YouTube channel, it is, it is all repurposed content. I, I don't hide it. Uh, why, why is video so powerful? Because I don't know if you can see me right now, but when you can see emotion, when you can see me smile, when you see somebody make faces um, and smile and, and, and you can see passion. Also, people learn differently. Some people like audio. Some people listen to podcasts on their way to work. Some people read blog posts. Uh, blog posts. Some people read an ebook or uh, on their Kindle or they listen to audiobooks. However, your learning style, audio and visual, are still very, very prominent. That's it's the old school learning in the classroom kind of similarities. So, video is very, very powerful. Even if it worked really well for you or um, didn't work well for you in written form, visual form could work well. Now, it's important to remember that audio and visual, when you're trying to keep when you're trying to teach or showcase something very complicated, you kind of have to dumb it down. You, you have to either verbally say stats that are important or trim out the fat that doesn't matter. Also, another thing to keep in mind is nobody wants to hear people rant on for 10, 20, 30 minutes. YouTube video will drop out unless people have opted into webinars and things like that. Um, they likely will not watch a 20-minute video. So keep your video short. Audio, on the other hand, um, can be a bit longer, uh, five to ten minutes. But um, just remember that people can understand. It's important to add the filter of can they understand this in a visual or audio format. And again, um, Meerkat no longer exists, but YouTube, Facebook Live, Vimeo, Periscope, all of these things you can do. You can do Facebook Live and literally just share your best content. What I do is, is – uh, I, I snap some of my best content. In fact, like uh, when I give before I go on stage to when I give speaking engagements, um, I just snap some of my favorite slides and I just talk about like for 10, 15 seconds at a time some of my uh, some of the most important points of my presentation as a way to just hype up the presentation. I tweet at it. I'll do a Facebook live uh, and, and things like that. Again, different formats, just expanding the reach of your audience. Is, is very, very important. And, and why video is so powerful, again, outside of the emotion and you can see the enthusiasm, the passion, is that anybody can write a piece of content. Anybody will, people will edit it, they will perfect it. You know, there's a lot of people ghostwriting it, but you can't just BS your way into a video. Most people, I mean, if you're a professional actor, maybe, but most people aren't professional actors. So uh, when, you, when you showcase your knowledge via video or audio, it passes the sniff filter of BS. Uh, you kind of have to know it to, to, say, to say it unless, um, and, and if you don't know the topic, then you will be very easily called out or it will be very clear. Again, another great way is SlideShare. SlideShare is, is a huge network. Um, people forget that. It's not just like uploading your slides and sharing a link. It's uploading your slides and putting it into a network that has millions and millions of users. And guess what? It's owned by LinkedIn, meaning you get the power of LinkedIn. Um, and so what I do is uh, I upload my presentations uh, uh, into, um, into, into SlideShare. I will make sure I tweet it out. I share it out. I email my, e my, my newsletter or my list this. I will do a, a little bit of ads. And what I want to do is just get the word out. And it will spark link, uh, SlideShare to essentially push it within their categories, and if it gets featured on the home page, bam, you get tens of thousands of views. A guy who does this really, really well is Ross Simmons. Check his stuff out. Um, I think it's his, uh, his Twitter handle is the coolest cool, which is 
a cool in, uh, cool handle. But um, but anyways, SlideShare very very powerful, and uh, and, and it's it's uh, it's an easy way just to, to leverage it without doing much much uh, much more work. I've already mentioned this a couple times. Uh, email newsletter. If if you're not emailing your list, if you well, first and foremost, if you don't have an email, email newsletter, install Sumo Me, install Optin Monster, and get a get a newsletter. Uh, send it an email out weekly. It's a great way. Email is people forget about this is probably the best traffic source for content marketers because you're speaking to people who have opted in, who want to hear from you, your fans, potential cu customers and clients, and these people will all share your stuff. In fact, like I said, they've opted into hearing from you, and um, you can keep growing this list, and, and, and it's something you can own. Um, you can't own Google traffic. Uh, you can, you're pretty much leasing it. <laughs> uh, if you're buying traffic, you, you know, once you're out of money, you are done. But an email newsletter, your email list, you own it. So uh, what I'd like to do is I send a, a weekly newsletter uh, with your with whatever content you want to kind of push out. You can, you can do the lazy way of literally doing a full RSS feed so every time you publish an article, it gets the RSS feed, uh, RSS triggers an email to be sent out. Um, or you can go, go more in depth and, and write something custom, introducing the article and link to it. You can also curate content. So uh, what I mean by this is if you don't have time to write content, just share some of your favorite content on the web. By being the source of information, you are increasing your authority. You don't always have to be the creator of information or um, the writer. You can be how people find out about the best and latest and greatest. And again, along that way, send some of your old stuff out there, right? So take something you written, you wrote uh, a year ago, update it a bit with more maybe compelling information, and and share it with your list. In fact, um, a little uh, a little secret. I was I was training a new uh, new hire to use our, our email marketing uh, software, MailChimp, and uh, we republished this article, 100 Ways to Promote Content. And all we did was change the title to the 2016 updated version. We added like two more tips. And uh, we didn't, we forgot to like turn off our email RSS uh, trigger. So everybody got an email with that article. And that content got bought, brought back to life. And oh man, it got another thousand shares. Yes, we have a big email list and whatnot, but it was an accident that ended up working out so well. And so I like to go and, and showcase some of my best content. That's awesome. If staff. I could just jump in and like share some experience that we had at SEM Rush was, uh, you know, there was a lot of concern all the time that people are hammering their email list too frequently. Um, but we found and, and found statistically that the opposite is often true. If you have genuinely engaged uh, people on your email list, um, they may be expecting you to email them as frequently as once a week uh, or maybe even more frequently and that you get sometimes more unsubscribes when you are not staying in touch frequently. I don't know if you have any experience along those lines, but that was amazing to see. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same exact thing. Exact. If you don't if you email don't. enough, um, they're they're gonna unsubscribe more often. <laughs> and uh, you know, I had I knew the power when uh, of email when um, a few years ago I went on vacation and uh, I thought I had like set a few campaigns to go out. I, I pretty much like went off the grid for two weeks and I came back. Apparently, no, the two emails I normally sent out weren't there. I had fifty emails from people saying like, "Hey." Where's your newsletter? I haven't heard from you in a while. Are you okay? <laughs> so you built some pretty good, like a pretty loyal following, and people are expecting to hear from you. So yeah. send them information. Yeah, yeah, they trust you, and they they keep uh, they keep wanting to listen to you. So that's yeah. how you keep them on board. Sorry, exactly. uh, you go on ahead because I know we're behind the eight ball here. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, I'll power through the next couple things. The simple premise here is syndicate your content. Again, Mint does it with CNN Money. Um, you can just go to CNN Money and you will see Mint's content. In fact, uh, they're probably now, Mint is also syndicating content from other bloggers, smaller sites, because they built up a pretty big site, size uh, a company. Uh, business to Insider, I mean, sorry, Business to Community. 
uh, does this, Business Insider also does this, Huffington Post, all these major publications do this. I'm not saying go and get the big ones out there immediately, you might not be able to, but I'm saying it's a possibility, all these sites do it. My favorite places, Medium, Examiner, Quora. So Quora is a Q&A site. Don't just republish your whole article. Go answer a question, go look for questions that your article solves and rewrite it in a shorter form. LinkedIn and Medium are my two favorite places. If you're in marketing, inbound.org or growth hackers, um, Reddit, there's, um, there's easy ways. In fact, like, uh, it's easy to uh, publish content on Reddit and it can just get in front of people. It might not be your audience, but you're milking this content as far as it can go. With LinkedIn, um, it's great because the LinkedIn network will, uh, will, will help you get more traction. And let's think about it this way. LinkedIn is your, if you're a B2B, uh, if you're in the B2B space, LinkedIn is all your professional contacts. Why would you not want them to see your content? They're, yeah, some of them might look at your blog, you know, maybe if you've got them off of LinkedIn, but realistically, all of them go on LinkedIn, and uh, why not get them where they go? And so it's, it's like getting the right people at the right time. Um, same with Medium, great. All of these places have networks and can help you get exposure. Um, Medium, you know, like I said, is, is uh, there's all of these blogs um, that host their, their, their blog on Medium. And so you can actually get submitted to there. In fact, I, um, you will see my content on readthink.com, which is powered by Medium, it's a HubSpot blog on entre entrepreneurship and business, um, and and I publish my content on Medium. And ReadThink has asked to pretty much pull it from my Medium posting to theirs. And so, bam! I got exposure to thousands and thousands of people that I normally wouldn't. And it's the same content I've used elsewhere. So um, it, it maximizes it. Reddit, yes, it's full of trolls, and it's hard to get on if you want to get upvotes and get shares, but it can drive pretty decent traffic, um, and again, uh, it's it's a link back to your site, and it only takes a few uh, minutes. Examiner, uh, this one's okay. It's this is a site that openly takes content. So again, like I want to present all the information of what can take content. I've already talked a lot about LinkedIn, and uh, and that's it, guys. There's there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you can kind of just simply update content with new images and headlines to get more out of it. You can repurpose it into different new formats um, and repost it and distribute it um, to really get a lot more life out of your content. And, and, and I urge you to look back at your last 12 months of analytics and, and look at what you can repurpose. And thank me later on that. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so, you know, aside from looking internally at your Google Analytics for the content that happens to be performing really well for you, uh, are there other tools that you may frequently turn to for an idea of what your audience is receptive to, what they're liking and sharing? Yeah, so um, I, I would look at like BuzzSumo. Uh, I'll also just always keep a tab out on my competitors. I have Buzz Sumo article uh, 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 filters on my competitors. I want to see what else is happening in the space. Any type of community there is, um, it, it's easy for when 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 you're in the marketing space because it's really obvious, right? All a lot of people are blogging. They're pretty vocal, but um, you know, there's communities for all types of industries. Uh, Slack is a, and Facebook groups are some of the best places to find these communities. Hmm. I found you go on those and just ask people like, hey, what do you want to read about? Email your list and ask them. In fact, uh, this weekend, I'm going to email my whole list and say, like, guys, I'm running out of content. Tell me what you want to know. <laughs> and I'm going to ask people a bunch of questions, uh, to ask me a lot of questions, and I'm going to turn those into videos. So don't be afraid to ask for content um, ideas from your audience. Yeah, your audience probably loves it when you ask them, too. You know, they probably respond pretty well. So that's, that's great. Um, I have to say thanks, Sujan, you know, a great presentation. Thanks everybody, including the audience, for sticking with us through the, the technical issues. And, uh, you know, I hope to, uh, as I said, you know, read more stuff on your blog, Sujan, and get uh, better acquainted with your stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me.